Namaskar. I'm, I'm a movie star. I'm 51 years of age, and I don't use Botox as yet. So I'm, <laughs> I'm clean, but I do behave like you saw, like a 21-year-old in my movies. Yeah, I do that. I I sell dreams, and I peddle love to millions of people back home in India, who assume that I'm the best lover in the world. If you don't tell anyone, I'm going to tell you I'm not. But I never let that assumption go away. <laughs> I've also been made to understand there are lots of you here who haven't seen my work, and I feel really sad for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 That that doesn't take away from the fact that I'm completely self-obsessed as a movie star should be. <laughs> and that's when my my friends uh, Chris and Juliet called me here. To speak about the future you, naturally it follows. I'm going to speak about the present me. <laughs> Because I truly believe that humanity is a lot like me. It is. It is. It's a. It's an aging movie star. You know,、uh, grappling with all the newness around itself, wondering whether it got it right in the first place, and still trying to find a way to keep on shining regardless. Um, I was born in a refugee colony in the capital city of India, New Delhi, and、uh, my father was a freedom fighter. My mother was well, just a fighter like mothers are. <clears throat> and、uh, much, much like the original Homo sapiens, we we struggled to survive.、Uh, when I was in my early twenties, I lost both my parents, which I must admit seems a bit careless of me now. <laughs> But, uh, I, I do remember the night my father died, and I remember the the driver of a neighbor who was driving us to the hospital. He mumbled something about dead people don't tip so well, and walk away into the dark. And I was only 14 then, and、uh, I put my father's dead body in the back seat of the car, and my mother besides me. I started driving back from the hospital to the house, and in the middle of a quiet crying, my mother looked at me and she said, "Son, when did you learn to drive?" And I thought about it and realized, and I said to my mom, "Just now, mom." <laughs> so from that night onwards, much akin to humanity in its adolescence, I learned the crude tools of survival. And 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 the framework of life was very very simple then, to be honest. You know, I thought,、uh, you know, you you just ate what you got and did whatever you were told to do. I thought uh, uh, celiac was a vegetable, and、uh, vegan, of course, was.、Uh, Mr. Spock's lost comrade in Star Trek. <laughs> you married the first girl that you dated, and you were a techie if you could fix the carburetor in your car. I, I really thought that gay was a sophisticated English word for happy. And lesbian, of course, was the capital of Portugal, as you all know. That <laughs> was.、Uh... So <laughs> we, we we relied on systems. Created through the toil and sacrifice of generations before, to protect us, and we felt that governments actually worked for our betterment. Science was simple and logical. Apple was still then just a fruit, owned by Eve first and then Newton, not by Steve Jobs. Till then, I mean, it was. And, and Eureka is what you screamed when you wanted to run naked on the streets. You took where you went wherever life took you for work, and people were mostly welcoming of you. Migration was a term then still reserved for Siberian cranes, not human beings.、Uh, most importantly, you were who you were, and you said what you thought. Then, in my late twenties, I shifted to the sprawling metropolis of Mumbai, and my framework, like the newly industrialized aspirational humanity, began to alter. In the urban rush for a new, more embellished survival, things started to look a little different. I met people who had descended from all over the world: faces, races, genders, money lenders. Definitions became more and more fluid. Work began to define you at that time in an overwhelmingly equalizing manner, and all the systems started to feel less reliable to me, almost too thick to hold on to the diversity of mankind and the human need to progress and grow. Ideas were flowing with more freedom. And speed, and I experienced the miracle of human innovation and cooperation, and my own creativity, when supported by the resourcefulness of this collective endeavor, 
catapulted me into superstardom. I started to feel that I had arrived. And generally, by the time I was 40, I was really, really flying. I was all over the place. You know, I'd, I'd done 50 films by then, and 200 songs, and I'd been knighted by the Malaysians. I had been given the highest civil honor by the French government, the title of which, for the life of me, I can't pronounce even till now. <laughs> so I'm sorry, France, and thank you, France, for doing that. But much, 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 much bigger than that, I got to meet Angelina Jolie yeah. <laughs> for two and a half seconds, <laughs> and I'm sure she also remembers that encounter somewhere. Okay, maybe not. And I, I sat next to Hannah Montana on a round dinner table. With a back towards me most of the time, <laughs> like I said, I was flying from Miley to Jolie, <laughs> and humanity was and humanity was soaring with me. We were both pretty much flying off the handle, actually. And then you all know what happened. The internet happened. I was in my late 40s, and I started tweeting like a canary in a birdcage, and assuming that you know people who will peer into my world will admire it for the miracle I believed it to be. But something else awaited me and humanity. You know, we had expected an expansion of ideas and dreams with the enhanced connectivity of the world. We had not bargained for the the, the village-like enclosure of thought, of judgment, of definition that flowed from the same place that freedom and revolution was taking place in. Everything I said took a new meaning. Everything I did, good, bad, ugly, was there for the world to comment upon and judge. As a matter of fact, everything I didn't say or do also met with the same fate. Four years ago, my lovely wife Gauri and me decided to have a third child. It was claimed on the net that he was the love child of a first child who was 15 years old. Apparently, he had sown his wild oats with a girl while driving her car in Romania, and yeah, there was a fake video to go with it. And we were so disturbed as a family. My son, who's 19 now, even now when you say hello to him, he just turns around and says, "But bro, I didn't even have a European driving license." <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> in, in in this new world,、uh, slowly reality became virtual, and virtual became real, and I started to feel. That I could not be who I wanted to be or say what I actually thought, and humanity at this time completely identified with me. I think both of us were going through our midlife crisis, and humanity, like me, was becoming an overexposed prima donna. I started to sell everything from hair oil to diesel generators. Humanity was buying everything from crude oil to nuclear reactors. You know, I I, I even tried to get into a skin-tight superhero suit. To reinvent myself, I must admit I failed miserably. And just an aside, I want to say on behalf of all the Batman, Spiderman, and Supermen of the world, you have to commend commend them because it really hurts in the crotch that superhero suit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm being honest. I need to tell you this. Yeah, <laughs> really. And and accidentally, I happened to even invent a new dance form. Which I didn't realize, and it became a rage. So if it's all right, and you've seen a bit of me, so I'm quite shameless. I'll show you. It was called the lungi dance. So if it's all right with you, I'll just show you. I'm I'm, I'm talented otherwise. Yeah. <clears throat> so it, it went something like this: lungi dance, 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 lungi. That's it. It became a rage. It really did. Like you noticed, nobody could make any sense of what was happening except me, and I didn't give a damn really because the whole world and whole humanity seemed as confused and lost as I was.、And、I didn't give up then. I even tried to reconstruct my identity on the social media, like everyone else does. I thought if I put on philosophical tweets out there, people will think I'm with it. But some of the responses I got for those tweets were、uh, extremely confusing acronyms, which I didn't understand. You know, R O F L, L O L. Adidas, Adidas. Somebody wrote back to one of my more thought-provoking tweets, and I was wondering why would you name a sneaker? I mean, why would you write back a name of a sneaker to me? And I asked my 16-year-old daughter, and she enlightened me. Adidas now means all day I dream about sex. <laughs> so really, I don't know if you know that. And so I wrote back, WTF in bold to Mr. Adidas, thanking 
secretly that some acronyms and things won't change at all. WTF? <laughs> But here we are. I'm 51 years old, like I told you, and、uh, mind-numbing acronyms notwithstanding, I just want to tell you: if there has been a momentous time for humanity to exist, it is now. Because the present you is brave. The present you is hopeful. The present you is innovative and resourceful. And of course, the present you is annoyingly indefinable. And in this spellbinding, imperfect moment of existence, feeling a little brave just before I came here, I decided to take a good, hard look at my face. And I realized that I'm beginning to look more and more like the wax statue of me at Madame Tussauds. <laughs> yeah, and in that moment of realization, I asked. The most central and pertinent question to humanity and me: Do I need to fix my face? <laughs> really, I'm, I'm an actor, like I told you, a modern expression of human creativity. The land I come from is the source of inexplicable, but very simple spirituality. In its immense generosity, India decided somehow that I. The Muslim son of a broke freedom fighter, who accidentally ventured into the business of selling dreams, should become its king of romance, the Bacha of Bollywood, the greatest lover the country has ever seen. With this face, yeah, yeah, which which has alternately been described as ugly, unconventional, and strangely not chocolatey enough. This, <laughs> the people of this ancient land embraced me in their limitless love, and I've learned from these people that neither power nor poverty can make your life more magical or less torturous. I've learned from the people of my country that the dignity of a life, a human being, a culture, a religion, a country, actually resides in its ability for grace and compassion. I've learned that whatever moves you, whatever urges you to create, to build, whatever keeps you from failing, whatever helps you survive, is perhaps the oldest and the simplest emotion known to mankind, and that is love. A mystic poet from my land famously wrote, "Pothi padi padi jug bhaya, pandit bhaya na koi. Pothi padi padi jug bhaya, bhaya na pandit koi. Dhai akhar prem ke." Which loosely translates into that whatever. Yeah, if you know Hindi, please clap. Yeah, that's right. It's very difficult to remember. <laughs> Which loosely translates into actually saying that all the books of knowledge that you might read, and then、uh, go ahead and impart your knowledge through innovation, through creativity, through technology. But mankind will never be the wiser about its future unless it is coupled. With a sense of love and compassion for their fellow beings, the two and a half alphabets which form the word "prem," which means love, if you are able to understand that and practice it, that itself is enough to enlighten mankind. So I truly believe the future you has to be a you that loves. Otherwise, it will cease to flourish. It it it、uh, it will perish in its own self-absorption. So you may use your power to build walls and keep people outside, or you may use it to break barriers and welcome them in. You may use your faith to make people afraid and terrify them into submission, or you can use it to give courage to people so they rise to the greatest heights of enlightenment. You can use your energy to build nuclear bombs and spread the darkness. Of destruction, or you can use it to spread the joy of light to millions. You may fill the upper oceans callously and cut down all the forests. You can destroy their ecology, or tend to them with love and regenerate life from their waters and trees. You may land on Mars and build armed citadels, or you may look for life forms and species to learn from and respect. And you can use all the monies that we all have earned to wage futile wars, 
and give guns in the hands of little children to kill each other with, or you can use it to make more food to fill their stomachs with. My country has taught me the capacity for a human being to love is akin to godliness. It shines forth in a world. It shines forth in a world which civilization, I think, already has tampered too much with. In the last few days, the talks here, the wonderful people coming and showing their talent, talking about individual achievements, the innovation, the technology, the sciences, the knowledge we are gaining by being here in the presence of TED Talks and all of you, are reasons enough for us to celebrate the future. Us, but within that celebration, the quest to cultivate our capacity for love and compassion has to assert itself, has to assert itself, just as. Equally, so I believe the future you is an infinite you. It's called a chakra in India, like a circle. It ends where it begins from to complete itself. A you that perceives time and space differently understands both your your the unimaginable and fantastic importance. And your complete unimportance in the larger context, in the larger context of the universe, a you that returns back to the original innocence of humanity, which loves from the purity of heart, which sees from the eyes of truth, which dreams with the untampered, which which dreams from the clarity of an untampered mind. The future you has to be like an aging movie star. Who has been made to believe that there is a possibility of a world which is completely, wholly, self-obsessively in love with itself? A world, really, it has to be a you to create a world which is its own best lover. That I believe, ladies and gentlemen, should be the future you. Thank you very much. Thank you.